<coughs> Today we're at a massive cemetery in Tunstall, Stoke-on-Trent. It's basically two halves. So up there is the old cemetery. <coughs> this here is an extension. And they do have a... We assume a... Muslim community graves. Judging by the writings and so quite some spectacular Muslim graves. Getting quite a, a lot of graves here now. Some are quite spectacular. I'm getting more and more of these graves. This is the new graves and some quite uh, spectacular ones here. And a big teddy bear there. It's nice to see some <coughs> some graves that uh, not the boring old just black small graves. When we come to the extension, the Bowen, and this is uh, quite a lot of what we probably call gypsy graves or traveller graves. The definition of gypsies used to be the genuine Romany, but uh, whether these are genuine Romany, I have no idea, but. Uh, Wonderful graves. And quite a variety of them. We have a little area here, even with a post box. So they're all quite spectacular graves and a lovely uh, area. A bit dodgy walking. <laughs> that looks like a child's grave. Quite a variety of graves in this uh, section. They do seem to allow uh, a lot of toys and other things on the uh, graves. A lot of graveyards don't allow anything. Quite a few new <coughs> new graves as well. Quite a lot of uh, Interesting football as well. There's a lot of Stoke City because we are close to well, we are in Stoke on Trent. Big spectacular graves. It's 
quite a nice area this as well it's very sort of countryfied and nice views across Stoke on Trent well we're now at the main entrance to the cemetery and you can see graves just go on forever most of this is, is fairly new uh, graves something of interest uh, we do have a section of Polish war graves I do want a bit of love and, and attention usually the Polish look after their own very rare to come and not find a can of beer very often the Polish come and uh, leave a can of beer for the fallen but not on this occasion but we have got uh, this is 1942 grave most of these were pilots but, uh, A bit strange we have all these modern graves and every now and again you come across a sort of an old one in the middle of it so and there we have two uh, or three fairly old ones amongst all these new ones They're all on the hill there, so a lot of these sort of tend to, to start collapsing. Quite a spectacular grave here. Lisa Morris from 2015. Really nice grave. Another one next to it, but with nothing really on it. Another nice one there. It's, it's how these sort of stick out. You see the same old black graves, and you get somebody that's uh, got something a bit better. And we now come to a roundabout, and we've got old graves here. Well, these are quite uh, famous. These are all ex-Catholic priests and the Catholics do seem to go sort of totally overboard with the uh, looking after their vicars whereas the, the UK ones and other religions don't seem to be the same. It's quite a strange one next to it. Not quite sure what the symbols are there. And again, you can see the sort of the countryside, and it's, it's a miserable, godforsaken day. But uh, more old graves. Well, across from the fathers is this grave. This is a wartime resistance fighter. Very famous. She did actually get sort of presented of uh, open access to the city. If you Google her name, you'll find quite an interesting uh, story about her. And there's quite a lot of war graves now. The, if the sort of this colour, <clears throat> the, the World War One, 
another one there, World War One, and the World War Two are more of a, a sandstone call. There's one right over there if I can zoom in on it. There, that colour. As we move on a bit, we do start to see the uh, old graves. And interesting, I don't know whether the actual council do this, but if we can see that grave there, if they become unstable, they put these two rods behind it and then put straps around it. Quite common around here, so whether the actual council do that or the uh, the relatives. When I get into the section, there's another war grave over there. World War Two. See, because it's on a hill, a lot of these graves sort of start to collapse. Because it's sort of got the greys at an angle to uh, try and keep them steady. An interesting little grave. Have a closer look at this uh, little boy. Obviously, a lot of these old greys. You have a job to to read what they say. There's an old one next to it. You can't really make out to uh, 1939. The one next to it's fairly old as well. They're all in a bad state. You can see how they are, because they're on an angle, they're starting to collapse. As we move up, we're starting to get to the old spectacular graves now. mixture of there's some new greys but a lot of these are, are sort of old and some are very ostentatious certainly statement pieces hammer Again, they're still on this hill. I mean, there's one there that's a, a big one. You can see some of the sort of fell apart or falling apart. And we can read that one. If we can get a bit closer, 1919, the typical urn on the top and the sole, leaving the the urn. It's the worst day to come because it's muddy, slippy, cold and wet today. Well, this top end's a bit sparse. But we do have these three here. Quite spectacular. Alfred Wright of Tunstall, 1933. Panford family, 1942. Across. We've got one here. Pots. And strange, this back bit's fairly sort of sparsely. Populated. Another well, Second World War grave. You can see the difference in the colour to the uh, the First World War. Again, we're all on this slant. We have had the local 
yobs in that uh, with the graffiti. Another grave there with the uh, straps around it. Another big one with the uh, urn on top. That's quite a common thing uh, around about the, the time 1918. You do get local ones where the stonemason, you know, perhaps had five or six different variations. Another little grave there with the straps around it. <laughs> It was such a small grave, you think they'd just fix the damn thing. And of course the council won't uh, fix it. Got another urn there. One of the reasons to come back up here is uh, We've been for ages trying to find the grave of Clarice Cliff, the famous potter. Now some indication from the council was it could be in this area. But we have searched high and low, it could be under the grass. It seems some of these, we've got these very flat graves. Uh, this one's got no indication of uh, uh, it actually is. I tried to uncover it. Uh, well, certainly none with the uh, Claris Cliff on. 1901. There's quite a few of these. <coughs> very flat. We had an exact GPS coordinates if the grave is here. There's another one. So uh, you can see they're all sort of over covered by grass. That's 1833. But we have had a good look round. There's no uh, Unless it's under the grass. Well, there's nothing so sort of obvious to find Clarice Cliff's grave. You'd expect somebody so famous, because one of the most famous potters in the uh, Stoke and Trent area, you'd have expected something quite big. Well, we have had a good look round. You do often find this that uh, someone is buried and they put a little tree with them, and then 100 years later we've got two here now completely surrounded by trees and uh, rubbish. This is another entrance, and this is where all the uh, really spectacular old graves are. Whether you have to be sort of the uh, elite to get in this uh, section. But they've really sort of gone to town up here. 1920s. Some really big greys. That's a, a very big one, that's from 1871. Another urn, but the uh, soul isn't flowing out. That's the little sort of side entrance. We've got some modern graves. 
The little girl that's harmless. Well, these must have been sort of important people back in the day. Age 29, this one, Emma. Nineteen ten, Amelia. Well, that's certainly uh, a whopping one. Well, that's nineteen oh two. Next to it, nineteen oh five, nineteen seventeen. Again, the old urn at the back there. Very popular Burslum. They have a lot of these with the. Uh, Earn. <laughs> I thought that's very clever, but it's actually a, a pigeon on, on the top. I thought it was part of the uh, memorial there, but it's a pigeon <laughs> sitting there quite proud. That's 1878. The pigeons from this week. <laughs> Another one, 1912. One at the back there. I can see these are really uh, way out. These seem to be the best because they seem to send the test of time, these with this style. There's two urns stood here, so I'm assuming the uh, urns are off the top. 1889, 1914. One there taken over with uh, Ivy. I thought we'd found something, when I <laughs> a, a cliff. Norman Leslie Cliff, so it's not Clarice Cliff. But there's a different one at the back there with the uh, big things. So it's where they find the way to get these little new ones in. Again, we can see one there. With the straps on the back. And this has got to be the most spectacular one. So that one's covered in ivy underneath all that. There's another grave somewhere. That's certainly a big one, 1884. Nothing on the top, whether that's uh, been destroyed again. Such a shame all these angels always have their hands broke. And that's a very ornate one, the uh, little carvings on it. Big one, John Sylvester. Really is a spectacular spot this is. Yet another urn. 1927, 1920. Well the view from here. Just a pity it's a misty day really. Is it? <laughs> it's a really nice view here. This other section, it's really stacked in tight here. You get more urns. Got some really big uh, greystones. One at the back there is a bit spectacular. All very tall 
1938, the old Celtic cross hiding behind the uh, things. There's a little car park here as well. But, uh, Another one, 1931. I mean, they must have had some money for these uh, these graves. This one's smashed to pieces, but it has got reasonably fresh flowers on it. One or two at the back there, 19, 1900s, 1898. Another one that's been smashed. Two nice symbols there, I can't quite make them out. The other one looks like a dollar sign. <laughs> Another one where the angel's fallen. Moses, <laughs> he's got the right name, isn't he? Another spectacular one, 1914. We are starting to come back to where we started from here, where the uh, new graves are. Again, we're starting to see a lot with the straps at the back. One with the two hands symbols indicates love. Yet another urn. It's a bit different that because the urn's fairly white considering uh, it's 1906. Again, lots of straps on these. And they have got a problem that's come a few years ago, and if you look on Google Maps right back to some of my photos, some of these graves were sort of accessible, but now some of these are, you can see right under brambles. And it's the latest craze in cemeteries to have this wildlife area which basically means they don't have to do sod all to uh, keep it neat and tidy we're walking from uh, the bottom up here it's just as though you're actually walking to uh, to heaven it's a very steep uh, bank to reach the laws at the top there. As we come down from heaven as we'll call it, uh, all tightly stacked a lot of old graves. 1915 seems to be locked around the 1900s. Another one, something missing off the top. You can see the letting it go to rack and ruin the graves there, the ivy's taken over. Another grave there all smashed up. It's again one of these that uh, does seem to survive everything, these solid, solid graves. If you're going to have a grave, have one of these. <laughs> It'll last forever. Another very big one there. Again, 
in the flat one next to it but it's up on bricks for some reason so can't make out 1912 that big one one a bit different uh, there it's hard to read 1880 something I do like something a bit different Nineteen seventy three. There is one over there that's worth having a look at. As we go, we see some more of these flat on the floor, which we thought might have been Clarence Cliffs. Of course, he's in history. had a grave like this. can still work out what these are but uh, it's not cut the grass very well there's quite a lot of these but this is a bit of a different grave I wanted to have a look at again it's in a bad state of uh, repair Sarah Bentley As we can continue down from the heavens as <laughs> you can sort of see up there spectacular 12 foot high graves and this slowly very important we're getting smaller and smaller as we go down the hill one with an angel why do they always lose their arms? Because it doesn't make any sense why they lose the arms. I know it's the weakest point, but uh, nevertheless. Another one strapped up there. Nineteen thirteen, eighteen fifty seven. You can see they're getting smaller. This one's sort of outdone it all. It looks as though this is once a very spectacular grave because there's all these bits at the side. And it's 1878. So presumably all these bits were round the side at one time. 1883. And it's long since been destroyed. These again just taken over with ivy. Yeah, another urn. Another one with something missing off the top. One or two interesting ones at the back. more straps at least they do seem to put these straps on if they do them in time they save the uh, actual grave because a lot just knock them over and, and leave them bit of an old one a dark one there You can see at the back there the uh, 
the new graveyard. One has fallen there. That one looks as though it's had steel around it of iron, which a lot were taken in the war. They took all the iron for the war effort. Going down a bit as the graves sort of get to smaller. Some obviously had a recent repair. Again, we see lots of straps. I mean, it's problem because it's, it's quite a see it's quite a steep uh, hill. This is. And again, this is the ones to get because these uh, don't go anywhere. There must be some fair old weight in them. Some fresh flowers, at one or two over there. Always worth a look because it came before and some from 1947 which is when I was born so it's 76 years ago and there's still somebody putting flowers on the grave it's unbelievable that uh, somebody's still showing an interest this one's fell over it has got some flowers on and this one's 1931-1940 and somebody's put some polyanthers on it See, we've got some new ones sort of crept in. Of course, some of the old graves, depending on the lease, after 50, 75 years, they can you reuse the graves. It's just a bad place to put a graveyard on such a, a slope, isn't it? That it's inevitable they're all going to try and slide down the uh, the hill. Some small ones there. One very black there, 1906. Another World War One grave. You see the colour of that. We've got quite a few trees here, isn't it? Uh, there's always somebody sneaks a big one in somewhere, isn't there? Because here's quite a big one. It really wants the trees lopping back because you can't really see this one, especially when the leaves are out. This is 1903. Another World War One grave there, but all this area is totally free. I've got some big old ones still at the bottom. They're obviously a lot smaller than those at the the top. This one around 1993, 1984, fresh flowers on. When I come here, there's an old man, and every time I come, he's here uh, putting flowers on his wife's grave. In the top end there. Another one with an urn. Black one there, 1903, that's uh, heading south. All these have, have fell over. Another one, 1899. 
It really is dodgy walking around here because you're not on a flat surface. More old ones seem to what they do is seem to put bricks under them, try and stabilize them. You can see the angle. A lot of the graves in this section are just totally destroyed. Again, you can see there's a big one there with a a chain on Let's see if we can get to that see what it is but you can see all the somebody sort of put a load of bricks underneath to try and stabilize it and just a little chain on the top Can't really make out who it is, but it's presumably a sailor because presumably the chain originally came down to here and an anchor, so it's, a, it's normally a naval grave. Another little section where they seem to have got quite a few newish graves, 1990, mixed in with the old graves again they're pretty sparse area so why are they quite open that bit at the top when there's quite a lot of room here there's that old grave there which is uh, I don't know whether that's a Catholic grave again It's quite spectacular, isn't it? It's, uh, nineteen twenty six doesn't say it was Catholic, but it tends to be sort of uh, Catholic graves. Just a 360 uh, view of them, the cemetery. You can see the graves just go on and on and on. And if we can see it or not, it's a bit hidden. At the back there, that there is supposed to be permanently lit. It's to room because there was a steelworks there. And that's to remember all those from the, the steelworks. But we're in a section where all the rubbish is. And where we've just been. And just to give an overall uh, view. You can see the worst day because it's all misty. Well, that does conclude uh, Tunstall Cemetery, which started in the 1800s. Now, I've mentioned before in a video that uh, I've been doing the graves for Google Maps, because eventually we will have Google Graves, and up to 103 million, I think it is, last time I checked the views on Google Maps. Well, I'm just trying this... Uh, YouTube and videos so give us a thumbs up if you like it because it depends whether anybody's interested in what I'm doing or not as to whether I can continue it is an expensive time consuming job travelling a long way to take all these uh, videos so comment or uh, thumbs up and 
anything would be uh, helpful and don't forget to subscribe because we have all sorts of things on the uh, channel anyway. <laughs>